Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to do a ghosted swirl finish with spray cans. So don't worry, I know the last time you guys saw me with a bucket of water, uh, I wasn't wearing a shirt. That's not going to happen this time. I promise. What you need for this is a, uh, a bucket of water or a container of water that is deep enough to fit piece that you are swirling and wide enough that you can move it around a bit. Unfortunately, because we're using spray cans, we're not going to have the option to kind of mix a pattern into the paint while it's in the water. Uh, the stuff kind of clings and it, it's just not going to work out quite that way. So we have to build our pattern first and the way that we get that actual swirl, even more so than usual, is going to be by moving the piece back and forth. So make sure you have a big enough container of water to be able to do that. Now for the purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to be using a small scuffed up piece of acrylic just to kind of show you how this works. Uh, if you're using something bigger, you're going to need, like I said, a bigger container. It's going to take more paint. Uh, and also keep in mind if you're swirling something made of wood, like a guitar, for example, it's going to want to float. Okay. So you need to create uh, a piece to put in basically the neck pocket or make sure you very carefully tape off your neck so that you can continually put that downward pressure on there. It's going to be very difficult to do properly if you don't have something relatively sturdy to work with. So first things first, we need our bucket of water. The temperature is not critical here. My water is actually pretty cold. If you're using the borax method and you're dripping in your enamels, then you want your temperature, your water temperature to be closer to room temperature um, or even a little warmer. I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't really use that method. So I'm not at all the proper source to get information about it. Uh, but for this one, Cold water is just fine. Make sure you wear a mask when you do this. When you spray paint into an area like this, what happens is it kind of bounces around a little bit and shoots back out pretty much directly at your face. Goggles would also be a good option uh, or a good thing to have rather. I'm not in a position to put those on right now, but uh, I'm gonna bring you in closer. I'm gonna wear a mask and I'm gonna show you kind of how I lay out my pattern thing in here. Alright guys, so I'm starting here with my white and black. I'm using those to create a nice high contrast. You don't have to use white and black, but you need something that's going to contrast fairly starkly if you're going to go over it with the, the, another paint after to create the ghosting pattern. Otherwise, you really won't be able to see that pattern at all through the other paint. So I'm laying down some black here. I'm going to try and you know get a fair bit of paint in there, but I'm using a transparent piece and part of it is going to remain transparent just by virtue of the fact that there isn't enough paint in this bucket to cover the whole thing. So if you don't want whatever your original color is or your original, you know, whatever look of your piece to show through, you're going to have to put a base coat of some description on there, some primer, some white, some black, whatever it happens to be. It can be any complementary color you want. So you can see me creating the pattern in here. Uh, I'm doing that by kind of creating rings and then spraying into the middle of them to create more rings and doing so at weird angles and stuff to move the paint around and push things into an interesting pattern because like I said I can't really go in there with a stick and swirl it so this is how I do the patterning. It's really pretty straightforward with the, with the spray cans but you can't just move paint around. So I've got some pliers here to just allow me to dip this in there and then a piece of paper towel to wipe off the excess paint off the top. You'll see me do that to wipe it off the top of the water. I'm moving the piece back and forth and then I get it fully submerged and I get rid of that excess paint so that when I pull it out it doesn't hit any of that and get contaminated. And here is the pattern that you left with after those few steps. Now we've got the swirling aspect of this paint job done. Don't forget to put a base coat on your piece if you're not working with something transparent or that you want to keep that background color for because the swirl will not consume the entire surface area. So for example on this one putting down a white or gray beneath my swirl job would have made sense. Also you're seeing that I started here, there's a lot more coverage here and a lot less up here. That's because I used a small bucket, I didn't have enough room really to get paint all over this thing. If I had a bigger tray or something like that, a bigger area to work with, not a tray, um, I could have gone all the way across and come back a little bit and it would have consumed the entire piece. Now for this, because it's transparent, having a clear section on top is going to look pretty cool. Not that this is going to be worth anything after, but 
uh, you do want to probably make sure that you have a big enough piece to cover the entire thing for most paint jobs. You might want to do something that fades from a swirl into whatever colors underneath, but that's up to you and something that you'll need to figure out based on the size of your piece. Now that we've got the swirl component of this done, it's time to get the ghosting effect on there. As I said, that's why I used the high contrast colors because now I'm going to go ahead and put a semi-transparent purple on here and that's going to kind of turn this into a purple looking surface with that ghost image underneath. Sorry about the distracting mess of a table here, but anyway, here we go. The key is to keep this relatively light and even. You can always add more after, but if you hose on a really heavy coat to begin with, you're not going to have the option to bring it back at all. Remember, the heavier this stuff goes on, the, uh, the darker it's going to get, the less transparent it's going to get. I've shown you guys this stuff before if you've been watching my channel. It's a semi-transparent, it's the metallic rust-oleum. There are many other options for semi-transparents and full transparents. If you want to do like a candy paint, you're perfectly welcome to do that. But for my purposes, we're going to stick with this. I'm just going to apply a nice coat of that and I'll have to do the same on the other side. Now it's going to take me a couple coats to really bury this image, but you can see already that it's kind of starting to ghost back there obviously because it's going to be more subtle with the paint on top. And after a couple coats, it's going to be quite difficult to see what was on there from some angles. I got to let this dry now and we'll come back and do another coat in a while. What we're left with at the end of all of this is kind of just a ghosted back image. And you can fade that back even further if you want. We get kind of the ghosted image of our swirl in there. Now that all looks very purple, as you'll see, as you've seen rather, uh, and you've just kind of got the swirls in there. There's paint on my hand. Um, but if you want more of the color to come through, if you want kind of the stronger contrast between that black and white to really be able to show, what you need to do is find yourself a lighter top coat. So the purple is very dark. If I had used, for example, a green or something like that, probably be able to see more of that through there. You might get a little stronger effect, but that's it. We've got ourselves this ghosted purple swirl image in there. And if you apply another coat of the purple over top of that, it'll get even more subtle. Yeah, honestly, if you apply another coat of the purple, it'll probably go away entirely. But with a lighter color, you can work a little more gradually and kind of push it back further and further in light coats until you get to the point that you want. That's it for this technique. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know. If you did like it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. And uh, as always, have a good one. See you next time.